I'm sure most of you remember my commentary on Tony Sonic. After all, it is my third most popular video at time of recording. I mention this because that video was Tony Sonic covering Shari's videos on Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic CD, and Sonic Spinball. Now at the time, Shari did not have a video on Sonic 3 Ampersand Knuckles. However, now he does, and Tony Sonic responded to it. So, I figured we might as well complete the saga. I do want to note, though, I know this video's a month old, so I'm a little late to the party. However, a combination of a certain skeleton and some issues we're not getting into right now caused me to have to put this off by quite a bit. I apologize. But either way, better late than never. Okay, we're starting off with five sins. We're making us wait almost 15 months for this. That's one sin for every three months, damn it. Also, what was with that sudden and incredibly jarring change in the aspect ratio of your video? I guess we've all been wrong this whole time. Apparently the full name of this game is Sonic 3 Sonic the Hedgehog and Knuckles. Really? This is what you start with? I mean, the title screen is the first thing you see. I don't know where else he'd start. Okay, ignoring how bad that joke was, how is that something wrong with this game? I get making jokes for the sake of levity, I do the same thing, but they should A, be extras for your points, or B, be added to a joke counter instead of the sin counter. This is why people can't tell when you're actually making points and when you're joking. You treat them exactly the same. Shari's point was just that the title screen was weirdly worded. It's not a big deal, but it is something wrong with the game. This is something you do a lot, by the way. In fact, I pointed out this exact issue with the first video of yours I covered, in that instead of actually addressing what Shari says, you just kind of say, well, it's really small, so it doesn't actually matter. And whenever you make these points, I can't help but wonder if you even know the CinemaSins format of videos. They're called everything wrong with. There's no asterisk after the word everything to alert the viewer of a note at the bottom that says, minus some really nitpicky stuff. For example, typos. No, if something's wrong with the piece of media, it gets pointed out. That's what everything means. Whoa, you're telling me that Knuckles is so powerful that he can just knock the Chaos Emeralds out of Super Sonic? Like, yeah, you could say that it's because Super Sonic was caught off guard by Knuckles, but isn't that kind of beside the point? Isn't Super Sonic supposed to be invincible? This is a topic that many fans have touched upon, and since the Genesis games don't really tell you much regarding lore and even plot, the only thing we can do is theorize. Since Knuckles showcases that he can use Chaos Energy from the Master Emerald to detect the Emerald Shards in the Adventure Games... You mean the ones that didn't come out for over half a decade at this point? What I'm saying is an important part of your explanation involves something that wasn't part of established continuity yet. And having to use evidence from future games in order to answer this very basic question about the first scene of Sonic 3 Ampersand Knuckles doesn't make the people at Sonic Team look like good riders. And the Master Emerald can negate the Chaos Emeralds. My theory is that Knuckles used that same energy to bypass Super Sonic's invincibility and knock the Chaos Emeralds out of him. Do you have anything in-game to back this up? Because if not, what you just said is equally in continuity to this. You try to infiltrate my home and hope you may steal my precious jewels. The chaos emeralds belong to me. You shall perish if you break my rules. I'll take these gems of yours. See how you like it yourself. Now leave this island to spike a little fiend if you know what's good for your health. Get those back. No. 
Fan speculation is fun and all, but fan speculation to work around plot holes doesn't make the plot hole disappear. It just means that fans have come up with ways that it could make sense in-universe. That does nothing to excuse the fact that the writers originally had a plot hole in their story, especially if one of your pieces of evidence, again, is a game that wasn't even out yet. Holy bananas! Like, how are we okay? Fire Breath set the entirety of Angel Island Zone on fire and somehow we're okay? Sonic and Tails are not human, Chari. They may not be immortal, but applying the same frail limitations of normal humans to a blue supersonic hedgehog and a fox with two tails that he can use as a propeller is stupid. I mean, I guess, but Sonic and Tails can still get hurt by fire, as seen by levels in this very game, like Lava Reef and Flying Battery. Hell, this is literally the game with the fire shield. The shield that specifically protects you from fires. The point is, the fact that Sonic and Tails don't get hurt by all of Angel Island being set on fire can't be brushed off just by pointing out that Sonic the Hedgehog isn't a human as if that was something Shari was denying. Almost 30 years later and people still don't know how to pronounce this damn level's name. All because of a single missing space. I mean, come on people! Everyone knows it's pronounced Hydro- I did read in a post once that Yuji Naka stated that he thinks it's Hydro City but I can't find the post anymore, so I'm just gonna say that there's no real right or wrong way to say it. If you think it's one way or the other, feel free. No one's gonna stop you. Okay, how much effort did you put into finding this post? Because I literally just googled Yuji Naka and then the name of the zone, and it was the first result. Also... I mean, come on, people! Everyone knows it's pronounced hyd- Bro, do you even count? But Tony, I thought... Typos aren't sins, they're nitpicks. Sorry, couldn't help myself. So wait, why can Tails fly infinitely here of all places? Because there's no ground here? If Tails had his limited fight here, it'd be nearly impossible to win this. He's not asking why from a gameplay perspective this is the case, he's asking why in universe. Because it is inconsistent that Tails cannot fly for an infinite amount of time in any part of the game except for right here. Also, I can't help but find it funny that the guy who responded to Shari's point about the very premise of this game with attempts at bringing in in-universe logic to justify it is now essentially saying in-universe logic doesn't matter. Because that's what Shari is basing this criticism off of, in-universe logic. We interrupt Sonic 3 and Knuckles to bring you Michael Jackson's jam. <laughs> no, the song! Ignoring the fact that Michael's producer Brad Buxer made these songs, Charlie makes a pop culture reference. You aren't wrong that it's a pop culture reference, but Shari brought it up because it's a well-known fact that there's a chord in Michael Jackson's song Jam that sounds very similar to another chord in Carnival Night. Listen to them back to back if you don't believe me. This leads into the more general belief that Michael Jackson helped with the soundtrack of Sonic 3, with you even acknowledging one of the many smoking guns for that idea. That being that Jackson's producer wrote some of these songs. This wasn't just a pop culture reference, it was a sly comment regarding well-known trivia about the game, and you just dismissing it as Shari referencing something honestly kind of irks me. It's not irrelevant, and if somebody notices it, it could be incredibly distracting, so what's the excuse for not letting Shari send this? And that's ignoring the fact that this piece of media, that piece of media, ask references are incredibly common in Cinema Sin style videos to the point where they're just considered part of the genre, but your unwillingness to actually engage with the genre that you're critiquing has already been established. This one just looks like a dick. Shari says boner, and no it doesn't. One, he said dick and not boner, and two, if you say so. I've never known what the hell this boss does. As far as I'm concerned, all he does is throw a ball. That's because you destroyed it too quickly. This is what it actually does.
Okay, I think Shari's point was that this boss is too easy to defeat quickly, especially if you have Supersonic, which a skilled player is likely to at this point in the game. This is a problem with a lot of the bosses in Sonic 3 Ampersand Knuckles, by the way. They're way too easy if you have Super or later Hypersonic. Hence, Shari's ability to defeat Robotnik before he even attacks. You saying that if Shari waited around long enough, Robotnik would attack doesn't change that. Does it really matter that Knuckles is looking around? I mean, the button is out in the open and right in front of the door. I don't think it matters if someone sees you. Not to mention, there are 77 of these things out in the open, 34 from this room onwards. What's hiding one behind a door gonna do? I'll give you the first one, but most of the giant rings are hidden in semi-obscure places. Plus, I'm willing to bet that most players don't even know all the locations of the rings without a guide. Okay, you had me and then you lost me. You are right that most of the giant rings are in somewhat obscure locations, albeit they're not particularly hard to find if you're looking for them. I mean, this is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But I'll grant you that, at the very least. However, then you say that most players don't know where all the rings are, which I do believe to be true, because there are so many of them. Shari himself used the number that there were 77 special rings in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Obviously, most people are not going to memorize the location of 77 special rings, especially when you only need 14 special rings to get all seven Chaos and all seven Super Emeralds. And the amount there are versus the amount you need actually ties into Shari's point that there's no point in Knuckles hiding this specific ring because there are 34 special rings from this point forward and you only need to know the location of seven if you want to get all the super emeralds. Wow, uh, that was a mini boss, I guess. I just sort of waited there until it jumped into the quicksand on its own. That's only one of three ways you can fight the golem. The other two involve smacking it continuously until it ends up in the quicksand, or waiting until it comes to the edge and then smacking it over the edge. Both of which involve actually attacking it. Okay, well Shari doesn't like the fact that you can beat the boss without ever having to attack it. Obviously there are ways of beating it that do involve attacking it, However, one way of beating it doesn't, and Shari doesn't like that. This is the same thing with the point about the Carnival Night Zone boss. The issue is that it's possible to beat it this easily. Nobody's claiming that's the only way you can beat it, though. Ah, yes, my favorite Sonic 3 mini boss, the Five Nights at Freddy's Endoskeleton. Which one? Whichever one you want it to be, Tony Sonic, because the joke works no matter which one you pick. Sonic has the strongest and yet somehow the weakest super form ever. He can literally destroy all enemies in his vicinity with the push of a button, but he gets defeated by a tumbling boulder. Pretty sure that's just a way to attempt to prevent you from using Hypersonic in the following boss fight. And even then, you can still use it if you have enough rings. Again, Shari most likely understands this, he's just saying that in-universe it doesn't make any sense that Sonic's hyper mode deactivates upon contact with a boulder rolling down, especially considering this is the same hyper form that can stand in lava no problem as established in the following boss that you fight just after this. He can literally destroy all enemies in his vicinity with the push of a button, but he gets defeated by a tumbling boulder. This is the ding dang, but the counter's deaf. <laughs> Typos aren't sins, they're nitpicks. This is one of Robotnik's best mechs. It's impervious to intense heats, not even lava can melt it, and it can't even be damaged by hypersonic. The only thing that can somehow damage it are the spikes it tosses at you. And he never stops to think, huh, maybe I shouldn't shoot these spike balls. I think they're hurting me, or hmm, maybe I should make another invincible mech like that. I agree with the stop shooting the bombs bit, but the invincibility only applies to gameplay. I guarantee you, if you were given hypersonic skin stats, that mech would melt. Quick question, how do you know that? I mean, Hypersonic's a fictional video game character. It's not like you can run scientific tests to determine this. Far as I'm concerned, it looks like you just pulled this out of your ass. And that's ignoring the fact that if that is the case, that would still be a problem because, again, it would be another sign of inconsistency within the in-game universe. Which is not a good thing when it comes to world building. How did Knuckles manage to get up after all that? 
He got bodied by Hypersonic, electrocuted by Robotnik, and then he fell like 15 feet onto the ground head first. He should probably be dead. I'm sure he would be if he were human, but like with Sonic and Tails, he's not. He's an anthropomorphic echidna that can smash through all manner of rock and metal, climb up walls with the spikes on his hands, and can glide with his dreadlocks. He's obviously tough enough to take all that, and even then, he shows signs of exhaustion later. So true, bestie. I mean, obviously. Duh. Oh. <laughs> I'm a Tony Sonic, you broke it me! <laughs> okay, I've regained my composure, mostly. So Tony Sonic, if it's so obvious, maybe you can enlighten me, because I'm just not connecting the dots here. What about Knuckles' powers would make him able to survive getting hit eight times by Hypersonic, being electrocuted, again, in the video game with the electric shield, so we know these characters can be harmed by electricity, and falling something like 15 feet? Obviously, Knuckles the Echidna is not human. Nobody is denying that. However, he is also not invincible. Hence why he needs to collect rings so he can survive getting hit. Did he just have rings on him at that time and that's how he survived it? If so, why didn't you just say that? Why bring his powers into this? And again, what about his powers inherently means he'd survive this? You say it's obvious, but it becomes less obvious the more you think about it. And while we're on the subject of super forms, what the hell is up with Super Tails? Not only does he need the Super Emeralds to transform at all, not just the Chaos Emeralds, why does he suddenly have four Flickies following him around? What, the powers of a god aren't enough for him? If you play Sonic 2 with just Tails, he isn't able to use the Chaos Emeralds to transform. The likely reason for that is that he doesn't know how to use them in that game. Same implies in this game until he unlocks the Super Emeralds, where he finally understands their power enough to transform, but not enough to use them to their fullest, which is why he has his flicky on the death to help him. Some call me Johnny, that's what you're referencing. Tails, who initially didn't have a Super Form with the Chaos Emeralds, now has a Super Form with the Super Emeralds. This always confused me as to why, but getting the Super Emeralds with Tails is well worth the effort. Super Tails is ridiculous! Besides having all the benefits of a super form, he can also fly much faster, and he also has his flicky army of death. He also doesn't have the army in Mania, because he likely knows how to use the emeralds fully at that point. Oh yeah, the actual point. I just put this clip in because I wanted that cookie. However, I do want to point out that once again, nothing in the game backs this up, so you're just speculating at this point. Also, if Tails knows how to use the emeralds in Mania, why would he lose the Flicky Army of Death? Shouldn't he therefore know how to summon them, or are the Chaos Emeralds sentient beings according to you? How does this work continuity-wise? Anyway, that's all I want to cover, so final thoughts? Tony Sonic's content has honestly barely improved. This is not nearly as bad as the first video of his I covered, but it has many of the same problems. Although he stopped mindlessly repeating the phrase, nobody cares, whenever Shari makes a point he can't counter, he still just has this tendency to engage in apologetics for the game in question, no matter how big of a stretch. I can tell he's trying. I really can. But the results are honestly just underwhelming. Good night, and good luck.